Hi, my name is Red, and today I want to talk about body dysphoria. Oh, I just got off work and I have a, a little BO dysphoria. Yeah, I want to talk about body dysphoria today, and you'll note that I didn't say gender dysphoria. <gasps> she say body dysphoria instead of gender dysphoria? What's going on? What's the deal? Yeah, so I said body dysphoria instead of gender dysphoria because if you think about it, and I know you won't, but if you do, it's interesting to note that gender as a word, etymologically speaking, has more in common with the words genre and genus than it does with sex. We use it interchangeably with sex, but when we say gender in our culture, what we're really thinking about is a physical form rather than a biological function. After all, sex, by definition in nature, really only pertains to two, two characteristics. There are only actually two characteristics that are universal in sex, and that is that males produce small gametes and females produce large gametes, and that is it. And so what we think of in our species, and our broader genus, I suppose, when we're thinking of sex, we're thinking of secondary sex characteristics, which are part of gender, which is a genus or genre of being. It's a form. It's a physical form. So it's not the same thing as sex. I think thinking of it in those terms makes it far more accessible. The idea of being bodily dysphoric is more accessible to more people. As an example, why don't you raise your hand if you have never felt uncomfortable with part of your body. You are a liar! Sorry, you might not, you might not. There are people out there, but I'm willing to bet that the vast majority of us have felt uncomfortable with our bodies at some time. Trans people are not the only ones. For me, generally, uh, what, what is more of the issue is not so much that I am dysphoric or unhappy with my body. I just feel discordant or disharmonious with my body. Um, I think those are the better words. I feel like I'm constantly having to have this conversation with myself and we just don't see eye to eye, my body and me, because I'm not entirely sure who the eyes belong to. I think they belong to me, but sometimes they play tricks on me, so who can really be sure? Um, but yeah, you know, I, I feel like I'm constantly having to negotiate things with myself and make sacrifices. Come on, body. I just want to fit into a size 10. I just want to look good in heels. Come on, work with me, please. Please. No! I don't want to fit into a size 10. I want to snap into a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Stop saying that. Ah, <sighs> Jesus. When we get back on hormones, you had better shape up or I swear to God I will cut you. I want to be a pretty, pretty princess and my body wants to be a professional wrestler. And while that's the conversation I have with myself as a trans person, I don't think that it's the only sort of conversation that happens that is a matter of negotiating things with your body that you don't want to do. For example, how many people dye their hair? How many people dye their hair? Not the same you say? Why? What's so different about it? You were born with brown hair. Now you have blonde hair. God didn't make you blonde. God doesn't want you to be blonde. You're going against nature. In fact, you're going against nature a lot because the bleach is really gross. If you want to be blonde, you were born brunette, dye the hell out of your fucking hair. Do it. Other sorts of transition, weight gain, weight loss, facial hair. In like third grade, my dad, who'd always had a mustache throughout my entire life, shaved it off. I came home from school and thought I was being robbed. It took me like ten minutes to recognize my father because he always had facial hair. He'd always had a big bushy mustache. And then he didn't have one. And I didn't recognize him. And, you know, that is its own sort of transition. Um, and I don't understand why transitioning between genders is so wildly different than anything else that people do all the time. That people spend billions of dollars a year to do. Botox, uh, Viagra, God gave you erectile dysfunction. I'm pretty sure it's in the Bible. I believe it's Leviticus. So you know I know what I'm talking about because I know Leviticus. So obviously I've read the Bible. It's Leviticus 1348b article 1. And thou shalt accept thy flaccidity and not take p 
he'll... But yeah, I guess what I don't understand is why one form of transition, which, just like all the rest of them, is completely harmless to everyone else, doesn't hurt anybody, is such a pathological disaster that ought to be stamped out and sends anyone who does it to hell, and everything else is, sure, go ahead, fine. At the very worst, if I think it's wrong that that industry is pressuring you to do that, you are beautiful the way you are. You know, that's the worst. But for trans people, it's, you are a monster. You're a monster and you're destroying everything. You're destroying women, you're destroying children, you're destroying masculinity, you're destroying the Super Bowl, you're destroying... God, there's always spiders on my wall. You're destroying the spiders on my wall. I, I didn't. I didn't actually smash it. It's still still running out there. Just in case anyone thought that that motion meant I was killing it. Um, but I digress. You have on the one hand, oh my god, what is on my hand? And then on the other hand, you have nothing. Okay, it's a bad metaphor. I I admit it. Um, but yeah. Why is it so dangerous? Why is it so pathological for someone to search for peace within themselves? To add harmony where there's disharmony. Bring together discordant parts into a solid, stable whole. Um, I don't understand why that's so sick. Um, except for people who wear colored contacts. Those people are freaks. Mutants. Anyway, I think I'm pretty much done talking. I don't know if I had a point, but if you got one out of it, great. Thanks for getting a point. Um, and I'll talk to you next time. Oh, God. My hand's stuck. Bye. Um, well, I mean, I guess I know what to do about it. Um, like, like, uh, I don't know, actually. I have no idea what to do about it. Tell me so, tell me so.